More than 10 million aluminum cans are thrown away worldwide. Together, they form a massive mountain of waste, enough to bury an entire city like Los Angeles under metal trash. But fortunately, aluminum can be recycled endlessly without losing its quality. From cans that seem worthless, a rebirth journey begins inside modern recycling plants. They are automatically sorted, shredded, cleaned of impurities, then melted at hundreds of degrees Celsius and refined step by step until they become brand new aluminum products. So how does this process actually work? Let's find out with Mandarin Tech. Every year, more than 70 million tons of aluminum are produced worldwide. A massive figure that reflects the metal's irreplaceable role in modern life, from beverage cans and window frames to cars and even aircraft. But this enormous scale also creates a serious challenge. The amount of discarded aluminum continues to rise rapidly. This is where recycling becomes critical. Around 35% of the aluminum used globally each year comes from recycled material. More importantly, recycling aluminum consumes only about 5% of the energy required to produce new aluminum from bauxite ore, meaning major energy savings, lower costs, and a significant reduction in CO2 emissions. In fact, it's estimated that around 75% of all aluminum ever produced in history is still in use today. The recycling process starts with a step that might appear straightforward, yet it ultimately shapes the effectiveness of every stage that comes after. Aluminum Scrap Collection In the United States, the global leader in aluminum recycling, this system functions on an enormous scale Stretching from beverage can return stations in municipal waste sorting facilities to vast industrial scrap purchasing networks. Each year, tens of millions of tons of aluminum are collected from countless sources, forming a continuous flow that keeps the recycling industry moving. What truly distinguishes aluminum is its built-in economic value. Even at the point of collection, a discarded aluminum can is worth several times more than a pet plastic bottle giving both individuals and businesses a strong motivation to send aluminum back into the production cycle. This is why the United States consistently ranks among the top countries in aluminum recovery rates, ensuring a reliable domestic supply of recycled material for its industries. From trucks packed with used beverage cans and food containers to scrap yards shimmering with metal, the collection stage stands as the real threshold of aluminum's rebirth, the moment when the metal begins its return to the modern world ready to reappear in an entirely new form. From collection hubs scattered nationwide, long lines of trucks filled with aluminum scrap roll steadily into vast staging yards. Each vehicle is weighed and recorded before hydraulically tipping its container, releasing the load onto conveyor systems that carry the material into storage zones. Beverage cans from retail outlets, food containers from residential areas, and aluminum offcuts from factories all merge here forming immense heaps of gleaming metal that rise like silver hills across the site. On location, technicians carry out rapid initial checks, quickly identifying and turning away any shipments tainted by excessive contaminants or dangerous substances. The yard operates at a relentless pace, with thousands of tons of aluminum arriving every single day. This makes the facility the true front line of the recycling chain, the critical gateway where all incoming material is readied for the next stage, detailed sorting. Next, continuous streams of aluminum scrap move along extended conveyor belts that never stop. Optical sensors, functioning like digital eyes, scan thousands of pieces every second, recognizing aluminum by its unique coloration and reflective properties. Right after this scan, powerful magnets extract any ferrous metals, while precisely timed bursts of compressed air propel the aluminum away from plastics, paper, and other lightweight contaminants. Layer by layer, the separation system goes to work, and what began as a chaotic blend of waste slowly evolves into cleaner, more uniform streams of aluminum. These materials gather into organized, shimmering silver piles. From this stage onward, the aluminum flow is chemically consistent and carefully regulated, prepared to move further into the next depths of the recycling process. Once fully separated, the aluminum scrap is directed into an enormous shredding unit. Conveyor belts continuously drop beer cans, 
food containers, and industrial offcuts into pairs of counter-rotating steel rollers fitted with sharp, hardened teeth. Under extreme crushing force, the metal breaks apart instantly, sending sharp metallic impacts ringing across the factory floor. In just a few rotations, hundreds of kilograms of aluminum are drawn in and broken down into small pieces. The system runs with remarkable accuracy, almost as if it were pre-programmed, as spinning blades and heavy crushing hammers work alongside the rollers to process even thick, rigid aluminum components. Beneath the harsh glow of industrial lights, streams of silver fragments flow nonstop, spilling onto the lower conveyor like a glittering cascade. A vibrating screening system then regulates the output size, ensuring every piece of shredded aluminum reaches a uniform dimension. The shredded aluminum fragments are fed straight into large-scale industrial furnaces, the core of the entire recycling operation. Depending on the scrap type and the intended final application, the facility may rely on reverberatory furnaces, rotary kilns, or electric arc furnaces. Each of these units functions as a sealed, precisely engineered system, carefully designed to regulate three crucial factors at the same time. Temperature, airflow, and the rate of material mixing. Inside, temperatures are held consistently between 660 and 750 degrees, high enough to liquefy the aluminum while preventing the loss of valuable alloying elements. Aluminum is introduced through a top hatch or a tilting chute, then kept in constant motion by mechanical agitators or controlled air injection. Some furnaces incorporate heat recovery technology to improve energy efficiency, while multi-stage filtration systems clean exhaust gases, capturing aluminum oxide dust and neutralizing harmful emissions. Throughout smelting, thermal sensors and chemical analyzers run without interruption, acting as the furnace's sensory system to ensure every batch of molten metal meets strict technical standards. This stage represents the climax of the process, where pressure, heat, chemical reactions, and mechanical control converge. One mistake can ruin an entire melt. The outcome is a continuous flow of clean, molten aluminum, ready for the next stage of transformation. Even once the aluminum has completely melted, it still holds countless hidden contaminants, invisible to the naked eye. Aluminum oxides, furnace dust, paint coatings, and even traces of oils or grease from its previous life remain suspended within the molten metal. To remove these unwanted elements, the facility performs a refining stage directly inside the furnace. The most widely used technique is fluxing, where a specially formulated flux is added to the melt. As it reacts, the flux binds with impurities, creating a lightweight dross layer that floats to the surface. This layer is then skimmed away, either mechanically or by hand, leaving behind a cleaner, more purified metal. In more advanced setups, inert gases such as argon or chlorine are injected at low pressure. Tiny bubbles pass through the molten aluminum, capturing excess oxygen and hydrogen and lifting them to the surface for removal. Temperature control continuously, ensuring the molten aluminum reaches the precise purity levels required for the next stages ahead. Once the molten aluminum reaches its target purity, it is routed into the casting area, where it begins to acquire its first clearly defined physical shape. This marks a critical shift from liquid to solid, from a formless mass of metal into structured units that can be measured, handled, and transported. The aluminum is poured into molds made from steel, graphite, or other specialized heat-resistant materials, depending on the final product. These may include vertical molds for ingots, horizontal molds for thick slabs, or continuous casting systems that use water-cooled, forced solidification. Pouring speed, mold temperature, and cooling intensity are all finely tuned. If the metal flows too fast, gas pockets or surface cracks can form, if the mold is too cold, solidification may occur unevenly, creating internal defects. Every variable must remain in balance, much like guiding a steady stream through a narrow channel. Any small deviation can distort the entire shape of the finished piece. In many modern plants, casting is fully automated, yet in some semi-manual operations, experienced workers still regulate the flow themselves, a task that demands split-second precision. 
Once the aluminum has solidified within the mold, a hydraulic mechanism applies gentle upward pressure, freeing the solid metal from the steel walls. Mechanical clamps then secure the heavy ingot, often weighing several dozen kilograms, lifting it out of the casting channel and setting it onto a parallel steel conveyor. The sound of metal sliding and scraping reverberates through the foundry, while each ingot's surface still emits a faint red glow from residual heat. One after another, the ingots are released in perfect synchronization with the machinery, arranged neatly along the moving belt. Sensors immediately scan each piece, verifying its shape and dimensions to confirm that no distortion occurred during release. From the casting zone, rows of solid aluminum ingots continue their steady advance, aligned like uniform metal blocks, signaling the completion of a full production cycle. After being released from the mold, the aluminum ingots are transferred into a preheating furnace, where they are softened and brought to the optimal state for rolling. Once prepared, each ingot passes through a series of counter-rotating steel rollers, where immense pressure compresses and stretches the aluminum block. This operation is repeated across multiple rolling stands, with the gap between each pair of rollers gradually narrowing. As a result, an ingot that initially measures several inches in thickness, often more than 8 to 10 inches, is steadily reduced into a thin, uniform metal sheet. A fine water mist cooling system stabilizes the surface throughout the process, preventing cracks or deformation caused by excess heat. By the final stage, the sheet reaches its specified thickness, sometimes just a few hundredths of an inch, before being guided forward as a continuous strip and tightly wound into large coils. These standardized semi-finished coils are then ready to move on to further processing steps, such as cold rolling, cutting, or stamping. After being released from the mold, the aluminum ingots are transferred into a preheating furnace, where they are softened and brought to the optimal state for rolling. Once prepared, each ingot passes through a series of counter-rotating steel rollers, where immense pressure compresses and stretches the aluminum block. This operation is repeated across multiple rolling stands, with the gap between each pair of rollers gradually narrowing. As a result, an ingot that initially measures several inches in thickness, often more than 8 to 10 inches, is steadily reduced into a thin, uniform metal sheet. A fine water mist cooling system stabilizes the surface throughout the process, preventing cracks or deformation caused by excess heat. By the final stage, the sheet reaches its specified thickness, sometimes just a few hundredths of an inch, before being guided forward as a continuous strip and tightly wound into large coils. These standardized semi-finished coils are then ready to move on to further processing steps, such as cold rolling, cutting, or stamping. Once they roll off the production line, aluminum cans spread into every corner of daily life lined up on supermarket shelves, buried in ice at cafes, cracked open at energetic parties, or quietly shared around family tables. Every day, hundreds of millions of cans are consumed across the globe, woven seamlessly into modern routines, from quick moments of refreshment to shared social experiences. Yet an aluminum can's value doesn't disappear once it's emptied. At that moment, it reaches a decisive fork in the road, thrown away as waste, or placed into the correct recycling bin, where its potential for near-endless renewal is unlocked. In countries with deposit return systems, more than 80% of cans are collected and transformed into new products within just a few weeks. By contrast, cans tossed into general household trash become an environmental burden, despite aluminum being one of the most sustainable materials ever produced. In the end, it is the consumer's choice that decides the can's future. Every time a can is dropped into a recycling bin, it's more than a simple gesture. It's a crucial act that keeps the green cycle turning, allowing aluminum to continue its endless journey instead of being lost to a landfill. We've just followed the extraordinary path of aluminum's rebirth, a closed-loop cycle that never truly stops. What once appeared to be useless scrap is transformed again and again, returning to our lives in countless forms from beverage cans and window frames to critical aircraft components. This circular process is more than a technological achievement. It reflects the everyday decisions we make. That choice comes down to one simple action, 
placing it in the correct recycling bin. So what will you decide? Let the can's journey end prematurely or help it continue its endless cycle, contributing to a greener future for everyone. If this video has given you a fresh perspective on the true value of aluminum recycling, give it a like, share your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more captivating production journeys in our upcoming videos.